PC, you want the fastest processor money can buy, then you'll be glad Lloyd Case joined us today. He's been benchmarking Intel's new Core i7-980X. Okay, what's the story on the new Core i7? Because the processor speed sounds familiar. Yeah, it's 3.3 gigahertz, so at first blush you don't think there's much change. How it's could it be faster? built on uh, th the 32 nanometer process, you know, the one they did for the new mobile processors a little while back. Mm -hmm. It's six cores and 12 threads. So if in multi-threaded apps, it's going to be faster just because there's more cores there. So Photoshop jocks are now f probably freaking out. Oh yeah, out. Premiere, anybody that's doing that kind of stuff, right? Uh, what is uh, All those uh, photo editing, video editing apps, yeah, they're going to love it. Or if you're like me, to keep like 7,000 browser tabs open right. in Chrome. <laughs> yes. The other thing though is that it has 12 megs of shared L3 cache. So even wow. stuff that's not heavily multi-threaded but might be cache sensitive, mm -hmm will run faster. What's it, when you're looking at this, so gaming is still barely taking two cores on most games. On a lot of games. Mm -hmm. um, there's a number of games now, especially ones coming out like Napoleon, uh, Total War, mm -hmm. uh, the upcoming game called Ruse, a few others that are heavily multi-threaded. Mm -hmm. Now when you say heavily multi-threaded, what does that mean? It means that, you know, for example, in the case of Total War, it spawns off AI threads and things oh, like that. So it may not be heavy use of the CPU, but anything you upload your, of your main core is probably a good idea. Because it seems like they always, you know, they're designing games for the fastest processor like two years ago. Right. So they can hit sort of the sweet spot or the tail end of the sweet spot today. Well, and, and with the big titles that are not PC exclusive, Napoleon Total War happens to be PC exclusive. Uh, for the big titles that aren't PC exclusive, you have the issue of the limitations of the consoles. Right. right. So. Well, when they move to 32 nanometer, and, the, and it seems like Intel wants to move everything to 32 nanometer, right. are they gaining any efficiency and performance at this point? Uh, they're gaining efficiency in, in the sense they can make the, this thing, they're going to sell this thing for the same price as the past Extreme Editions, right? So it's That's pretty good. Uh, not, basically a thousand bucks for two more cores, four more threads, it's a billion transistors, you know, it's not any bigger in terms of the die size. So I'm still like, like, I remember like when GPUs hit a billion transistors, I was like, are you kidding me? Right. At this point, like, is, is any of the design on the, on the new processors manual, or is it pretty much all computerized at this uh, point? Intel, uh, well, with the case of the graphics guys, a lot of it is automated, right? They, they use a lot of automated tools. Intel and AMD on the processor side tends to do a lot of manual layout. That's how they get the high speeds with all these transistors. Oh, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. So there's still guys going in there, or men and women going in there, actually yeah. figuring out where to run the traces. That's right. That's a really wild concept. Mm -hmm. In terms of performance, how does this compare to the previous Core i7? It's going to be, like I said, it's going to be faster. Or the previous fastest right. Core i7 Extreme Edition. <laughs> Which was the 975. Right. This one's called the 980X, by the way, uh, the actual part number. Uh, it's going to be faster in those multi-threaded things. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that might be faster in is encryption if your application supports the encryption that's built into it because the 980X is like the past Arendelle and Clarkdale mm -hmm. processors. It's got that new AES encryption engine that Intel added to the Oh, system. interesting. So, yeah. I mean, but who's really using that encryption engine at this well, point? Well, I think you'll have it happen more and more, especially as, as the web-based guys take it over. What you're re really going to see it initially is on the server side because they're going to roll that into you know the SSL stuff really fast. Oh, wow. So they basically allow SSL yep. encryption to be... Yeah. yeah. And then and then eventually, you know, your your security apps on the PC and the desktop side will roll that As in. we lock down every aspect of the PC. So the Core i7-975 Extreme Edition um, is pretty much... It's Core i7 975. Was the old one. Was the old one. 980X is the new one. So, and, and you had mentioned, so basically, f for a lot of applications, there should be no performance difference between them unless they take advantage of the encryption engine or well, the extra two cores. Or the extra threads, right. Now, you mentioned an Intel snuck out a new low end Core i7. That's right. You know, I was wandering around, I, I didn't get this from Intel PR, I was wandering around our favorite store, Central Computer. It's and a very good place to shop. The one I in Santa Clara. Anyway. Came across. <laughs> A box, Intel box, looking at the Intel boxes, and there's something called a 930. And I said, what the heck is this? Core i7 930. Turns out that it's a, it's a Core i7, 45 right. nanometer, same as the old Core i7, so nothing mm -hmm. really different. Three channel memory, you know, it goes into a socket 1366 motherboard, 2.8 gigahertz. And it's roughly the same price, maybe 10 bucks more than the 920. Yeah, it's pretty, because like right now the, 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 the Core i7 860, the 920 and the 930 are within $15 of right. each other. that's about right. What's the difference between the 860 and the 920 and the 930? The difference between the 8 series i7 and the 9 series i7 is the number of channels of memory. So two channel on the 860. 
That's right. So we should basically just ignore that unless you have some old memory. Well, no, I mean, four, four gigabytes is going to be most for a lot of people, even gamers. Right. I mean, you, you load it up with two two gigabyte DIMMs, and you can even put uh, eight gigabytes in there pretty easily. Okay. Well, and it's actually, I guess, clocked faster than the 920 and the 930. Uh, it's clocked the same as the 930. Okay. So the 860 is the same clock speed as the 930. <laughs> the 860 <laughs> is the 930 with two channels. The 930 is the 860 with three channels. Right. Is the 920 going away? We don't know yet. Well, I'm, I'm going to try and find that out soon. Because it's been sort of the overclocker's darling. It's been right. Yeah, so I mean, I own a, I, I love my Core i7 920 because they overclock about like 30 percent. Right. Oh, the other thing, the other bit of tidbit of information. Back to the 980X mm -hmm. for a moment. It's a socket 1366 processor mm -hmm. with a BIOS update. If you have an X58 motherboard, you should just be able to drop it in. Ooh. I get, is 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 you know what? I, I was going to ask you about the overlap between the Core i5 and the Core i7. Is that for another day? Well, really, in a nutshell, it's hyperthreading. Core really? i7 has hyper-threading, Core i5s don't. I'm counting desktop processors. We're right. not going to go down the rat hole that is laptop naming right now. Oh, we'll get him down that <laughs> rat hole later on. Lloyd's off to the Game Developers Conference. You give us an update when that's done? It's going to be done Saturday. Hopefully yeah. we'll get him back in next week to talk about that. You can find Lloyd's work up at MaximumPC.com and Antech.com. Do us a favor, follow Lloyd on Twitter, at Lloyd Case, Twitter.com slash at Lloyd Case. No, Twitter.com slash Lloyd Case. I should know right. this. I've been using Twitter for a while now. <laughs>